Hi, I'm Trisha J. Wildrich, and I am a novel friend. A novel friend is the business that I started some time ago to encompass my editing, my writing, being an author, and everything I love about words, because words are a bridge between people for communications, a way to build relationships, and as corny as it sounds, to make the world a better place. Welcome to week three of November. I'm Trisha Wildridge of A Novel Friend, and this month I am doing a short story that I wrote as opposed to poetry, uh, because it's a celebration of all saints and all souls, which is what kicks off November. Uh, it is called Cemetery Angels. It is in Dark Luminous Wings by Pull to Pull Publishing, and it is actually set in St. Stanislaus Cemetery which is very hard to say and many of my family are buried there and I'm just gonna jump right into part three of Cemetery Angels in Dark Luminous Wings. Cemetery Angels. Behind me I heard mom shout and swear more. I heard thuds. I heard man's voice swear too and cry in pain. I dared glance back. The pale man was holding his head and leaning on a gravestone, but the hand he leaned on seemed to keep slipping off the stone. Mom was running toward me, but slowly she was still limping. Our empty soda bottles bounced like toys in the grass behind her. There was blood on our turquoise and white tote bag. Keep going! I did as I was told and headed toward the road curved around this lot. There was one more square of graves before the roads funneled into the main alley terrace that passed the statues of St. Michael, St. Stanislaus, and all the priests who had worked for the Polish church. The Bondomobile squealed around the corner to the road I was headed toward. I stopped myself so hard I fell backward. My butt crunched in dry grass, but I was back on my feet really fast and changed direction. Lillian, where are you going? Daddy, was all I could say. He was always there watching, right? I went by my bocce and Jaju's grave. The Virgin Mary whispered to me, good girl, keep going. I did. I got to my mom's grandparents' grave and my lungs were burning. I stopped and looked for mom. She was behind me, but still slow. There were two men running now. The pale guy's face was bloody from where I guess mom kicked him or whacked him with her purse. He was lagging behind, but the second man, who looked like a skeleton in clothes, was catching up. He seemed to keep almost running into gravestones while Mom slipped between them as if they parted for her. I heard the rustle of cement feathers. Mom's grandparents' angel gave me a look as stern as Mom would have. I nodded and ran. Then Mom screamed. Then I heard all the angels awaken. The sound of cement wings is like nothing else. When they'd adjust or shift, it's soft and rough scrape and sigh. When they open in flight, the movement is a low, gritty growl. When you have a cemetery full of flying stone angels, it's a roar that shakes the ground. Keep running! Jesus, two stones down, was not smiling. He looked quite angry, but not at me. His thorn-crowned heart was beating as fast and as hard as mine. The uninjured skeleton man was right in front of me. His eyes were wide, bloodshot, with pupils so big they were almost all black. Even though all his veins stuck out over his face and neck and arm bones, he looked every bit as ghostly pale as the other guy. He snorted like a bull demon through his flaring nose and stank like oniony B.O. I yelped and fell. He grabbed for me. I flailed, hoping to hit or kick him. He backed up enough for me to run. I ran to Daddy. The dust from stone and cement rings rose to the sky, dimming the sun. I fell at Daddy's grave. My fingers scraped over the bronze plaque. Tiny drops of blood stung my palms and I gasped for breath. It'll be alright, my angel. I felt arms around me. Daddy's arms. I tried to look up, but the angel wing dust stung my eyes and made me cough. He hugged me tighter. I squeezed my eyes open just a little so I could see through my latches. I could see his ghost. The car the men had come in was flying up the road. It couldn't seem to go straight, 
but it aimed up the veteran's path. I couldn't detect any breathing or heartbeat from Dad, of course, but he seemed calm. One hand smoothed my curls, like he used to when I had nightmares. The angels above us separated, uncovering more sunbeams that made Dad's ghost more invisible. Then, darkness and a roar of cement feathers blocked the light for one brief moment. A whistle of wind introduced a thunderclap as the biggest angel landed his bare feet upon the battered Bondomobile's hood, spearing the engine with a giant stone sword. The two front tires popped like gunshots, and the front end's metal screamed as it collapsed. I gasped, but wasn't frightened. I recognized St. Michael the Archangel from the third branching of the main cemetery road. He held the earth in one hand, his sword in the other, the sword he now pulled from the mostly cracked-in-half engine. Inside the car, a third man yelled lots of swears and shoved at his door. St. Michael stood at his full height, much taller than any person I knew, and watched. He pointed his sword towards the man who started slamming his head into the driver's side window until it shattered. Blood covered most of the man's may as well be a ghost face and blossomed over his t-shirt, and jeans he fell under the steering wheel and stopped moving altogether. I saw the other two men stop and stare at the car, at their slumped friend at St. Michael, who now pointed his sword at them. They had cuts up and down their arms and legs, their clothing hung in bloody tatters, and the cement dust of circling angel wings above us started to coat them, as if they were transforming into cemetery statues. They fell to their knees and started babbling, like babies and not sounding like any language I'd ever heard. Then both of them collapsed. I heard sirens. All right, so that is the penultimate part of the story of Cemetery Angels in Dark Luminous Wings. Link below if you want to buy a copy. It's cool. And I hope you want to find out what happens in conclusion to the story. I will see you next week. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're enjoying this, please share, leave comments, subscribe, all of the above. And I will see you next week for the stunning conclusion of Cemetery Angels. Bye.